In fights where bosses have millions of HP, you're missing out on hundreds of thousands of damage getting this wrong. Hey, hey, proxies, Zenpai here. Today, we're going to talk about pen ratio, particularly when you should use pen ratio slot 5 over attribute damage bonus. There's a lot of debate over when to use one over the other, and I'd like to share my insight to help you decide on which is better for your team. So, let's get started. Before talking about which slot 5 is better, we first need to understand how damage is calculated. There's two damage formulas, one for standard damage and one for anomaly damage. If I simplify them a bit, you'll actually see that they have five bits in common. Real quick, if your agent is a rupture class and does sheer damage, the only differences are that your sheer force stat acts as your attack stat and your defense multiplier is locked at a value of one. This just means your damage ignores defense. Back to the five multipliers though, let's take a look at them. The res multiplier is mostly dependent on your enemy. If an enemy is weak to an element, like Pompey is weak to fire or Bringer is weak to ice, then it will usually have 20% less resistance to that element. In most cases, lowering the enemy res is locked behind specific premium W engine effects or Mindscapes. Due to this, anyone who's getting these effects has made the conscious decision to pull for them and should be aware they're getting them. This is important because since in the majority of other cases where players are using M0 premium agents with free-to-play options or their premium SIGs don't offer res reduction, this multiplier will remain untouched. Having constants like this is good for testing our damage, as we can ignore them and only test specific changes to really see how some factors affect your team's overall damage. Next is the damage taken multiplier. This is a damage debuff the enemy may have on themselves. An example of this is the miasma phase bosses have. During the phase, enemies have minus 25% damage taken, so all of the damage is only doing 75% of its normal value. This is enemy dependent most of the time, so if you're testing out various builds to see which clears better, you won't have to worry about this since you'll be fighting the same enemy. Again, another mostly constant multiplier. Following that is the stunned multiplier. This is the value the enemy has under their health bar when you fill up the daze meter to full. Most enemies will have 150%, which means that all of your damage during their stun phase is multiplied by 1.5. Some enemies like Typhon Destroyer or Marionettes have a higher multiplier like 200%. Other bosses may have lower values too. This multiplier can be changed by skills from agents like Chingy or Lycon, but since the multiplier is only active during stun and has a clearly displayed value, it's easier to compare than other values. If you're testing the same team just by changing your DPS's build, you'd have to just make sure to apply the same stun multiplier buffs and you'll see consistent results. Overall, this can remain very constant as well. Now, let's talk about the more dynamic multipliers for our comparison damage bonus multiplier, and defense multiplier. If we're comparing pen ratio versus attribute damage bonus fairly, these are the only two factors we should alter. Whenever you're trying to test something, it's best to have as few changes as possible so you can actually see the difference between each choice. The damage bonus multiplier is a very common buff. It's got so many sources and all of them add together. Let's take a look at a practical case. If Nekomata has her core skill F, she'll gain 60% damage bonus. If you're using her signature steel cushion, it says it grants 20% physical damage and 25% damage increase when attacking from behind. Even though some of these just say damage or physical damage specifically, they're all damage percent bonuses. If Nekomata gains all three of these, her attacks would be boosted by 105%. Normally, any attack will do a base damage of 100%. Right? Without any boosts, an attack shouldn't be stronger than just its base 100%. So when we add 105%, the multiplier would be 205%, or 2.05. I chose Nekomata with her signature for this example because her numbers are very simple and very high. However, an agent isn't just limited to their own damage percent bonuses. For example, if you use Nekomata in a team with Astra and Nicole, Astra's EX skill boosts damage percent by 20% at level 12, Astral Voice 4 piece boosts damage by 24% at 3 stacks, and Swing Jazz 4 piece boosts it by 15%. If you're trying to stack as many buffs as possible while playing, and you should be, then this 105% total goes up to 120 
and 64%. Now let's talk about that, because seeing an increase of 59% damage can easily be misinterpreted. Some players might think that if my attack did 100 damage, now it should be doing 159 damage. What's most important here is having the proper frame of reference. What I mean by this is, make sure you're making the correct comparison. The first mistake you can make is assuming 59% damage percent is equal to 59% more damage. This is almost never the case. You might be thinking, well, okay, the number went from 105 to 164. So then I should compare those values. If you do that, the total is actually around 56% more damage. So you might be thinking, 56%, you're making a big deal over less than 3%. Who cares? This is the second misconception someone might make. Remember, your attacks have a base damage of 100%, so the comparison here is actually 205% going up by 59% from her teammates to 264%. Suddenly, your almost 60% damage bonus got cut down to less than 30. This is what people are usually missing. The attack with 100 damage doesn't do 159, it does 128. It's just 31 damage though. No, this is just an example. It scales. If your damage is 100k, you're missing out on 31k. In fights where bosses have millions of HP, you're missing out on hundreds of thousands of damage getting this wrong. Forgetting to add the base 100% damage is also a common misconception when we're talking about crit damage, by the way. If you'd like me to dive into explaining critical damage, let me know in the comments. Now that we understand a bit about damage, percent as a stat and multiplier in the formula, let's talk about the defense multiplier. Calculating the defense multiplier is not pretty. Look at this formula. But don't worry, I think I've cooked up something that will help you guys understand it more simply and experiment with it if you're feeling brave enough. For now, let me try to explain it without all the math. Defense is a stat that is meant to protect an enemy from your attacks, so the multiplier's maximum value is 1. If an enemy had 0 defense, this defense multiplier would be 1. Why? Because they have no way to defend themselves, so any damage thrown at them would just be raw damage. Make sense? Okay, now the game has this value called a level factor or level coefficient. This isn't just something the game outright tells you, but we have a table showing all of the values. Don't worry, you don't need to know these at all, I'm just showing them to you so that when I reference a number, you know exactly where it comes from. This level factor can only be changed by leveling up your agents. If your agent is level 60, the value will be 794. Why 794? That's just how the game is coded. Since I play an underlevel challenge, my level 50 agents would have 592 and my level 40 agents would have 421. Most of you will only be tackling endgame content with level 60 built agents, so the majority of my examples will use that value. Again, don't worry if you can't remember the number, it's not important since it will be a constant once your agents are all locked in at level 60. The defense multiplier is calculated by having this level factor both in the top and the bottom of the fraction, but you then have to add the enemy's defense to the bottom. If you know how fractions work, you can skip this part, but if you don't, let me explain. Let's say you had a cake. Cakes are made to be eaten, but by whom? If you eat the cake by yourself, you can have the whole cake, but then you might get called out for being a fat ass. And if you have friends in the room, you might annoy other people if you're the only one having cake. So if you share with one other person, now you each could have half of the cake. Add another person, and now it's one third. The more the bottom of the fraction grows, the less cake you will each eat. In this case, the amount of cake eaten is the amount of damage done. For the formula, let's see what happens when we have a defense of zero. The top and bottom numbers are both your level factor and you get one. Like I said before, if an enemy has zero defense or you ignore 100% of their defense, like with sheer, your damage is not decreased. Since we cannot have a negative defense stat, this value of one is the maximum for this multiplier. Okay, now let's talk about a normal case. If you're not using sheer and if you're using level 60 agents, this multiplier is actually quite constant. The defense stat of most endgame bosses is 953. Not sure why, this is just a standard that's been followed since 1.0. For our examples, 
we'll mainly be talking about these bosses since min-maxing is mainly done to beat these guys. Whenever you want to make your own calculations, please use your enemy's defense values so you get accurate results. If we plug in this standard defense value, the defense multiplier is about 45%. It's actually kind of wild to see we're losing 55% damage to just the enemy having a defense stat. This is important to know as a baseline. So without any defense shred or pen ratio, this is where we start. Now, thankfully, any defense reductions cap out when we reduce the defense to zero. So pen ratio can be anything from zero to 100%. Given this, I've actually compiled a spreadsheet that can help you visualize how much damage you're gaining from using pen ratio. It shows you the defense multiplier at every 1% of pen ratio and how much damage you're gaining relative from when you start off with zero pen ratio. It also has a column that shows relative increases for each pen percent. We can use that to see that pen ratio actually scales harder the more you have of it. Originally, I made this to better analyze and understand pen ratio for my builds as the underlevel challenge I do to beat the end game with level 40 and 50 units was getting rough. So I have an extended version of this spreadsheet, but most people would mostly be interested in this level 60 version. I'll link it in the description, pinned comment, and add it to our Discord server for anyone who'd like to join. I'll be adding all my resources there for easier access. We're very active and have a lot of members, so consider joining. Now that we know how damage percent works and establish a baseline for pen ratio, let's see exactly when one is better than the other. If you're going from zero pen ratio to 24% pen ratio, my calculations show that the damage increase would be around 15%. Once we know this, if all other factors in the equation stay constant, ideally, this would be the case, you'd be fighting the same enemies with the same teams and playing at about a similar level and your substats for your two discs would be the same, Seriously, don't try to replace a disc with seven substat rolls with one that has two, it's it's not fair. Then the calculation is actually simple. If we gave the agent plus 30% attribute damage, then we need to make sure that the new total damage percent is less than a 15% increase in total damage. To simplify this, I've also made a damage percent multiplier spreadsheet. This simply takes your current damage percent bonus from all sources and adds 30 to it as if you were using a slot five disc. It then shows you the percent increase of your total damage dealt. So for example, if we only had Nekomata's 60% damage bonus, we would scroll on the sheet and see that adding a slot 5 on top of this would only give us 18.75% more damage. If we factor in the 45% from her two signature effects, then the 105% damage bonus with a slot 5 would only give us 14.63% more damage. As you can see, increasing the damage percent constantly decreases the total damage gained when using a slot 5 damage percent disc. While we're here, we can see that at 100% damage bonus, the total damage gained from a slot 5 is 15%. So, in a case where all factors remain constant except for a swap of attribute damage slot 5 or pen ratio, the rule is, if your damage percent is 100% or higher, pen ratio is better. This rule holds true for the majority of cases, however, here are some exceptions or things I haven't tested. Pen ratio is not better for a rupture agent, as the stat does nothing since they're already ignoring defense. A team with defense shred, depending on how much defense shred they have, will have a different threshold of damage percent they'd have to reach in order for pen to outscale. This is because pen ratio and defense shred do not add together. And lastly, there's also the debate of when attack percent is better than pen ratio. This case is much harder to draw up a rule for, and I need to spend more time to make a video for this. Some things to consider are, each agent has different base attack and W engine values, and buffs like deadly assault buffs or hormone punk that work off of initial attack let you double dip into a higher attack stat, which might outscale pen ratio. I'm sure I could make some spreadsheets or come up with something if you guys are really interested in knowing when to use attack or pen ratio, so let me know if you're interested. Real quick, before finishing up, by doing all of this, I actually learned that for my teams at level 50, the damage percent threshold is actually a lot lower. It's about 76% and also pen ratio and defense shred is slightly more valuable the lower level your agents are. So yeah, for anyone who's crazy and does under level clears, stack up on pen ratio discs. I hope this video helped you learn something new or see things in a fresh way. If you have feedback, corrections, or your own tips to share, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe while you're there.
I'll be streaming soon with account reviews, fun challenges, and plenty more content like this, so feel free to pop in sometime. Our Discord community is growing fast, so if you want to hang out, ask questions, or share your own gameplay, you're welcome to join us. Links will be in the pinned comment and the description. And if you'd like to support the channel, we've got memberships now. You can also donate pulls or skins or go through Ko-Fi. Your support helps me keep on making videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.